part four of that time I pulled up to my house being raided. Now, like I said, I had DCF in my face. I had the cops there. I had DCF demanding me to piss in a cup. I had the cops demanding to know where all the shit was they seen a little bit ago. And I'm sitting there arguing with them. Well, you know, if it was here, why didn't you take it? They're questioning my babysitter. They're questioning my fiance. And eventually they're not getting nowhere. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to talk. I'm not stupid. I'm not going to incriminate myself. Um, of course, at that time, I didn't understand why they didn't collect anything. Like in my head was, I really didn't understand it until, like I said, when I went to court and I actually talked to a lawyer and all that, it was because they didn't have a warrant and it would have been really easy for it to get thrown out and I'll get to that and why that is later. And you're probably wondering why my sitter didn't call me this entire time while they were at my house. Well, like I said, when I left in a hurry that morning, I forgot my damn cell phone. Well, anyway, they're all in my face asking me all this bullshit and, um, you know, I couldn't pee. It's not that I didn't want to pee. I told them straight up what would be in my system. Um, eventually, the cop said, well, look, if you're not going to tell us what we need to know, then we're just going to charge you with what we can. I'm like, okay do that <laughs> I was already on probation at that time so it wasn't good I was automatic VOP I end up getting taken to jail right there they ripped my baby out of my arms and DCF takes them and I end up getting arrested and I told a story a little bit ago about how that time I went to jail with dope in my bra this was that time I went to jail with dope in my bra I had four grams of H in my bra that I had totally forgot about because all this shit going on, I didn't even think about it. You know what I mean? I just, I didn't even have time to think about it because everything happened so fast. You know what I mean? Um, I ended up getting taken to jail on felony child neglect um, without bodily harm because it's bullshit <laughs> how they came up with that charge, but it, it was a serious one. Basically, they, and I didn't understand how I was getting charged with that charge, really, because everything was kept separate on the other end of the house from my son. Like I said, they just happened to show up at the wrong day. We always had a motel room that we did our dealing out of. The one time I happened to be sick and we happened to be at home, those two days that I was at home, they happened to show up. And I don't think, looking back, that was a coincidence. Um, one of my lawyers mentioned that somewhere later on that there was actually a report called in that I was dealing with my kid in the home. So I think that's more of what happened, but I'm not sure. I'll never really know. Now, let's get back to the rest of it. <laughs> so I get taken to the jail, part five. Part five of that time, I got raided and pulled up while it was happening. Now, like I said, I get taken off to the jail. I luckily end up getting a bond and I get out that next morning. Um, obviously, you know, DCF took my son and they placed him with his father, luckily. Um, his dad is awesome. He's always been awesome, always been in his life, always been great. I have the best baby daddy ever. Um, anyway, that was okay. I end up contacting DCF and the lady immediately is trying to talk me into signing my son over. Like she's telling me that I'll be lucky if I ever get to see my son again. <laughs> like, and I'm, you know, I've dealt with DCF my entire life growing up and I know how wicked they could be. And I, yeah, I just wasn't dealing with her. Um, my son was good with his dad where he was at luckily. And then I ended up falling ill with my endocarditis, my heart infection. So that put off me going to court for a good eight months. Um, when I finally did get out um, the hospital, my fiance had just died right after. And this is when I started to get sober, which is a good thing. Because honestly, I don't think I would have beat my court cases if I didn't get sober and clear headed enough to fight my cases. Um, my sitter kept telling me that that day that they came, he couldn't call me by the way, because I had forgot my phone that morning. So that's why nobody called me and I pulled up to it happening. Anyway, um, he said when they came that morning, he was outside smoking a cigarette and the cops literally walked by him and just opened up my door and came in. But when I have asked the cops how they got in my house or why they were in my house, they said that my front door was open. Okay, now this is where shit gets important because remember I told you they didn't collect anything that they seen the first time and I thought that was super weird. Well, 
I ended up having to put in for another public defender because the first public defender I had did not have my best interest at heart at all. And I think it's because my past with addiction, she represented me before in other cases. I would always miss court. I always had problems going on. And then with my heart infection, nobody took me serious on that either. They just thought that I was trying to miss court. You know what I mean? And she just didn't take me serious. When I kept asking for the body cam footage, she just kept brushing it off like it didn't matter. And, you know, I have a right to that. You know what I mean? I have a right to see the body cam footage just like anybody does. And eventually, I did end up putting in for another public defender. It was a process, but I ended up getting another one. And this one listened to me. And we watched the body cam footage. And sure enough, they walked up to my house and opened the door. I had a glass door and I had a front door. I'm going to do a part six because it's about to end. Part six. So that time I pulled up to my house while it was being raided. Now, as I was saying, um, the body cam footage ended up showing them walking up to my house. And I had a screen door, like not a screen door, a glass door. And then I had my front door. And sometimes when you would put like open that glass door, it would kind of make the front door, you know, not completely open, but you know what I mean? Like, I can't explain it. Just like crack open. But either way, they're not supposed to just open either door. They're not supposed to open the doors. You know what I mean? Now, if the door is wide open, yeah, they can walk in, especially if they see stuff that would be probable cause. But they tried to say that my door was wide open and because what they seen in my house, it was probable cause for them to come in there. And that's why they were in my house that day. No, they weren't supposed to be in my house that day. They had a warrant for a person, not a warrant for that house. And the warrant they had that, that the, the warrant for that person was for a person who hasn't even lived there. And they knew that. So the way they went about my house was completely illegal. And the funniest thing about all this was they were like on my ass to go to trial about this and because I was going to go to trial because it basically turned into them. I said, well, why am I being char charged with felony child neglect? And they said, well, because you left your kid home alone. <laughs> my babysitter was there. You know what I mean? And I said, the body cam footage will show that. That is why that is actually the main reason I wanted to go after the body cam footage was because it will show that. It'll show that I didn't leave my kid home alone. It'll show that they walked up to my house and my babysitter was sitting right there and they just walked in my house. So not only did the body cam footage show how they went about entering my house, it also showed that my son was never left home alone, which threw out the child neglect charges. And basically they had no case because them entering my home the way that they did they should have never, they, they, they should have never been there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was illegal as fuck. And right after that happened, like when I tell you it went from me having felony charges into looking at five years in prison maximum or five years probation, it went to one year felony probation. If I complete it, my charge is contributing to the delinquency of a minor. That's what I ended up charged with at the end of it all was contributing to the delinquency of a minor, which doesn't even make any fucking sense for anything that involved. Like, that's usually something that happens when you buy cigarettes or something for a kid or alcohol for a kid. So that just goes to show you how fucked up they had me. You know what I mean? Like, they just had to charge me with something in the end. And my public defender even told me that, that they just had to charge me with something. Part seven coming up. <laughs>